Let me start off with some updates to the channel. I stream here on YouTube now. That means my VODs will stay up indefinitely, and subscribing here will alert you to when I am live. Please consider subscribing. Now, on to the guide. So let me first say that this will not be a guide on the basics of tanking itself, but rather the basics of what TurtleWow has done to Paladin tanks. First off, we have new abilities. Crusader Strike, Holy Strike, and a Seal of the Crusader's Judgment effect has changed. Crusader Strike applies a debuff that adds 30 Holy Spell Power to the target stacking up to 5 times, which basically replaces the Seal of Crusader's old Judgment effect, and all talents that affected it now affect Crusader Strike. It also deals 103 physical damage that cannot crit but can proc weapon effects and enchants. Holy Strike is an on next weapon swing attack which adds extra damage and converts the entirety of its damage to holy, meaning it ignores the armor of the target. Holy Strike also scales with spell power and attack power, and because this ability is based off of an auto attack and is considered a spell, it also scales off of both physical and spell critical hit chance, meaning that this ability will crit often. Seal the Crusader's Judgment effect is no longer a debuff, and upon judgment will essentially force proc a weapon's effects, including enchants. This is a base of 30 times multiplier, but it has been nerfed on some proc effects to not guarantee a proc. Primarily, this change affects CC type effects like Earthshaker and Dark Iron Pulverizer. In addition to these major changes, a lot of ability scaling has increased as well. Secondly, we have changes to talents. Here you can see the talent tree is shaken up quite a bit, but the major changes are Consecration is now a baseline ability, Sanctity Aura moves from the Ret Tree over to the Holy Tree to take Consecration's place, King's moves from the Prot Tree to take Sanctity Aura's place, Blessing a Sanctuary moves up the tree to take King's place, Holy Shield moves up the tree to take Blessing a Sanctuary's place, and finally, replacing Holy Shield as the final talent in the Prot Tree, is Ardent Defender, which reduces damage taken while below 35% health by 25%. The only other major changes in the talents for Prop Paladin are Improved Seal of Justice, which at 3 ranks allows you to taunt a target upon judging justice, and with 3 ranks and shield specialization, blocks return 2% of total mana. And lastly, we have changes to gear. Paladin tier gear has had the spirit on it changed into agility, and on the tier 1 set, the bonus healing has now been split into spell power and healing, retaining the same plus healing of course. The tier 2 8 set has changed, and the Xandalari 3 set has also changed. Unfortunately, most of the changes to Paladin gear as of right now seems to lean more towards Rep Paladin, so until TurtleWow adds more stamina to the current gear or creates more Prop Paladin-centric items, most of your best items can only be obtained from world bosses and the rest are just straight up Rep gear. There's one more notable thing about gear, and although it's not really a change, because of Turtle adding new items with the effect I'll talk about it here. Items with the Equip Adds X Damage to Melee Attacks can crit based off of Spell Crit and can proc Judge of Wisdom. This effect can also proc off your Melee Attacks and Seal of Righteousness, and both of those can also proc Judge of Wisdom. So with just one of these items equipped, every auto attack has four chances to proc Judge of Wisdom. So what do these changes mean for the player? Well, the abilities end up changing a lot. Just adding Holy Strike means you no longer have to rely on King Spam to hold threat. And just a quick aside on King Spamming, you can play however you want. I know plenty of prop paladins who don't use King Spam, but it's a very useful tool to have. Spamming Kings allows you to not only build ranged threat, but build equal threat on everything in combat with you. And with some changes Turtle Wow did, they actually kind of buffed it since now buffing warriors also buffs hunters pets, vastly increasing the number of viable targets to buff. And that's important because you get 114 threat per target buff divided by number of targets you're in combat with. There's also a common misconception that King Spam isn't good for AoE threat, and while that's not entirely false, it is really good at beating healer's threat, whose threat is divided by the same number of targets, and King Spamming actually gets the mobs into your really good AoE threat ability, Consecration. You can find the Smart King's macro I use in the description. Anyway, not so quick aside, done. The opener, as a prop paladin, is to pre-queue Holy Strike, Holy Shield, then on contact with the mob, Judge Righteousness, and re-up Seal of Righteousness. 
If you don't have a Ret Paladin putting up Wisdom, you'll judge Wisdom, then go into Seal of Righteousness instead. The rotation after that ends up just being to keep Holy Strike and Judgment on cooldown, spam Crusader Strike as a filler, and use Consecration as a mana dump for heavy threat fights. You should almost always use max rank spells in raids, and only should be switching to lower ranks mid-fight when you start to notice your mana won't last until the boss dies. And I want to reiterate, if you don't have a ret to judge wisdom for you, you will judge it. Judge of Wisdom is mandatory for almost every fight. The best situation you can be in is only running Oom um when your healers do. That means if your healers are using mana consumes, you should too. This is to minimize time wasted on just one person sitting and drinking. You can achieve this in three ways. One, threat management. If you notice you're outpacing the DPS easily on threat, you can slow down on threat and focus on regenerating mana for the next encounter. 2. Wear more on hit items. Switching to a sword like Crimson Spellblade with life stealing will increase your mana regeneration by a ton, since weapon procs like life stealing can also proc Judge of Wisdom. 3. Use consumes. Major mana potions, tea with sugar, even non mana regen consumes will help you by allowing you to output more threat per mana. Speaking of consumables, tea with sugar is a thing here. Turtle Wow has added a repeatable Timber Maw hold quest that gives you 12 charges of tea with sugar per turret. These are better for mana than dark runes or demonic runes and heals you for more than a whipper root tuber would. And all of these share the same cooldown. There is one downside to this. It only has 3 charges per inventory slot so they are definitely less compact than the other consumes. On to talents. My threat spec ends up being 0 2130. Vengeance is just too good as a threat option. Going this deep into red also allows you to freely pick up King, the improved red aura, and pursuit of justice. Here you'll see I have two-handed web spec for the few times I throw on a two-hander for more threat. And I mainly pick it over Heart of the Crusader because I have a Ret in the raid with Heart of the Crusader, Libram of Fervor, and the PvP gloves, which all stack together. It is important to note that only the first application of Crusader Strike matters for this, i.e. if the ret with all these items is the first to apply Crusader Strike, then every application of max rank Crusader Strike from anyone builds upon the bonuses that the first paladin has. Moving on to the prod tree, the only movable talents here are taking two ranks in toughness over Guardian's Favor and maybe moving one point from Blessing a Sanctuary into toughness as well. But personally, I like and use the utility from these two talents more than I like the 2% armor from items per rank, mainly because I use full consumables for everything and if I feel I need more armor, I just pop a Greater Stone Shield potion. Speaking of mitigation, here's the mitigation spec. This one is less important on where all the points go exactly, and honestly, I only switch into this spec in raids for tanking all the gar adds. This spec is a lot more fluid in what you can do with it. The only mitigation things I pick up for it are Ardent Defender, Toughness, Anticipation, and Deflection. I only go into Kings for emergency range threat via spamming it, and also because I'm usually the one assigned to buff it anyway. While I do pick up Spiritual Focus, this is more in case of an emergency. You shouldn't rely on using self heals while tanking in raids because you cannot dodge, block, or parry while casting. And this not only reduces your tankiness, but also reduces the mana you gain from blocking. Now, on to probably the most confusing part of Paladin raid tanking. Gearing. First, I'm gonna start off by listing what stats are beneficial to you. Literally everything. But spirit. Intellect will increase your total mana pool and thus also increase how much mana you gain from blocks. Before talents and kings, one int will give you 15 mana, 0.3 mana on block, and every 54 int will increase your spell crit by 1%. Stamina gives you 10 health per point and is probably the stat we're most starved of. Agility gives both crit and dodge at 20 agi to 1% each. Agility also gives armor, but most of the time the amount is negligible. Strength gives attack power at a 2 to 1 ratio, that's 2 attack power per 1 strength. Defense cap in vanilla is 440, so you need 140 defense from gear and talents to reach it. Not only is this not all that important, but it's actually really hard for a paladin to achieve, and is not worth the stats you lose achieving it. 
What defense is good for is avoidance. Roughly eight defense will total about 1% avoidance. Crit, both forms of it, are really good for increasing vengeance uptime. But once you no longer struggle to keep vengeance up, its value drops off a lot. Same issue with int and mana regen as a whole. Having more is always good early on when you can't find both int and stand gear. Int is really valuable to sustain your mana pool, but once your mana pool is no longer stressed, getting more won't help as much as you used to. Damage on hit items are super valuable as they increase both mana regen and vengeance uptime, as the damage can crit and scales off of spell crit, and the damage itself can proc Judge of Wisdom. The single best added item with this effect is Blaze Fury Medallion, which drops off of Kazak. The most obtainable item would probably be Fiery Plate Gauntlets or Storm Gauntlets, both of which can be crafted by an armor smith with the pattern. The longest lasting of any of these types of items is Crimson Spellblade, primarily because you can swap weapons in combat, meaning that you can put this on whenever you need more mana regen. Getting hit capped is very important for anyone. Getting 305 weapon skill will give you 3% hit with that weapon type and increase damage from your autos by reducing the glancing blow damage reduction. You also get 3% hit from talents and thus need to find 6 more hit with no weapon skill. Generally, the best way to do this is to be a human and don't use an axe. This makes it so you only need to find three hit from gear. If you aren't a human, then you'll need to find six hit from gear, which is substantially harder as only one piece of paladin tier gear has hit, and it only gives one. You could try to find weapon skill from items, but most of these items will be gloves, and you'll probably be using an on-hit item in that slot, and weapon skill on items is extremely rare. During pre-raid gearing is where you'll struggle for good gear the most. I'd suggest just kind of wearing the warrior design tank gear pieces and supplementing the lack of int with two on-hit items like Crimson Spellblade and Fiery Play Gauntlets. You'll transition to just one of these items once you start getting tier gear as T1 has a good amount of almost every stat you want. The Xanalar 3 set has changed on Turtle WoW and is very good as it adds holy damage to any and all judgments. This adds up to about 15 threat per second, although you will need to be revered to actually wear three pieces, but CG has a three day lockout, so it won't be too hard to get the rep for it. Five piece judgment is always good, and while the eight piece looks good, the lack of agi and crit on judgment as a whole means that it won't proc as often as it first looks like it should. You can maybe try to stack crit in all the other slots, but you'll primarily want to use hit and mitigation items in those slots. Five piece Avenger set is bis for threat and will be hard to beat. My biggest problem with the set is that it's clearly designed to be a ret set and lacks the stam you want as a tank, but you just don't have another option sadly. As a raiding prop paladin, I suggest you get three weapons. A threat weapon, a mitigation weapon, and a mana regen weapon. The mana regen weapon is easy, it's just Crimson Spellblade with life stealing on it, as life stealing adds an additional chance to proc Judge of Wisdom. The mitigation weapon is also decently easy. Dreams Herald can be crafted by a swordsmith with Scenario and Circle Exalted and it's decent AoE threat and scales with spell power, although the major benefit with this weapon is the attack speed slow debuff. This is huge for mitigation and even stacks with the Thunderclap and Thunder Fury attack speed slows. The threat weapon is a bit more difficult to decide on, because your threat scales off of so many things including weapon damage and spell power of which finding both on one weapon is near impossible. The best fit for this exact type of weapon can only be found on Aura Stone Hammer, not because its DPS is particularly high, but because it's slow and thus makes its top end higher. And I should mention that you want a slow weapon because both Holy Strike and Seal of Righteousness do more threat per second with a slower weapon. Holy Strike does because it has a 10 second cooldown and thus makes it so the slower your weapon is, the higher the percent of your physical damage from autos are turned into holy damage. Using a slow weapon with Holy Strike also has the advantage of pre-queuing Holy Strike before pulling a mob and getting a huge threat lead instantly. Seal of Righteousness actually took me a lot of testing to figure out its scaling. Here I have a graph of my data. The green line is the base DPS of Seal of Righteousness without any spell power. The top blue line is the DPS of Seal of Righteousness with spell power, and the bottom two teal lines are the difference between the two. Or in other words, the DPS from just the spell power scaling. 
The teal lines clearly show that the spell power coefficient scales with the speed of the weapon evenly, and causes the speed to not matter when accounting for spell power. However, the base damage of Seal of Righteousness does do more DPS with a slower weapon, meaning that no matter how much spell power you have, as long as both weapons have the same spell power, a slower weapon will do more threat. On the other side of the argument is that you want a full-on caster weapon with a ton of spell power, since so many abilities scale off your spell power, including both Holy Strike and Seal of Righteousness. All of this is very complicated math to do in your head when trying to figure out what's best, but luckily, I've done the math for you. Here's a very useful resource I made to put this debate around slow weapons versus spell power weapons to rest. I highly suggest you go down into the description, open this Google Sheet, and make a copy. You can then input your own stats into the cells on the right and see what weapon will work the best for your gear. Just be sure to remember to refilter the total TPS column after you make any changes. So here you can see my personal copy of the sheet. I've input my own unbuffed stats on the right and I've also filtered out axes because I'm a human and won't use them. Thunder Fury ends up being top by a large margin, unsurprisingly. Then for me, Gressel and MSA end up being almost identical. Then close behind are all three of the best spell power weapons being almost the exact same. These weapons are the perfect example of speed being so important as Lockamere catches up to the Nax weapons despite having 11 less spell power solely because its speed allows it to have a higher uptime of Holy Strike. You can also use this sheet to compare gear in an indirect way. You could input the stats of two different gear sets and just compare the number on your current weapon between the two different gear sets. Like I can put 30 more spell power in my spell power cell for spell power on weapon. My MSA now has 623 TPS, but if instead I put 200 attack power in, assuming the 100% uptime of Crusader, it only does 614 TPS. This example not only shows that 30 spell power to weapon is better than Crusader, but it also shows how this sheet allows you to compare different gear sets. Now you know how to play and gear as a prop paladin, but what should you actually be doing in raids? While I am currently main tanking raids, I do not suggest it. Instead, the best reason to bring a prop paladin into a raid is to AoE tank. Shocking, I know. It's very valuable to have a warrior and slash or a druid on the first kill target, maybe even assign the second kill target as well, and then just assign the rest to a prop paladin. Even when I'm main tanking, if the encounter has multiple adds, I usually assign myself to AoE tanking. As an off tank though, you have the advantage to put on high value debuff weapons when the encounter only requires one tank. Some examples would be Dreams Herald, Nightfall, Annihilator, or whatever your guild needs you to put up. With the change to Judge of the Crusader, there is no other class that can put up weapon debuffs as well as a paladin can. So what can Turtle do to improve protection paladins? First off, the spec. Prop paladins shouldn't be more ret than prot just to hold threat. If one-handed spec increased all damage instead of just the weapon's damage, this would go into helping deep prot not be so bad. Even if it did increase all damage, the total 10% would still be less than Rhett's 15% from Vengeance. Adding 10% stamina to the talent would make it more desirable to pick up and make Ardent Defender less bad. Ardent Defender is so bad that I'd literally only pick it up if Threat plays no part at all in the fight. It really should get a buff. Without a full rework of the talent, the only way to fix it would be to increase the health threshold to at least 50% and that would be with fixing Paladin's lack of stamina through itemization. Speaking of, prots need more proc gear, threat oriented and mitigation oriented. As it stands, prop Paladins have to wear ret gear for threat and be as squishy as a DPS or pick up an almost entirely world boss drop mitigation set. I'm not asking for both sets of stats on one piece, I want two sets, a threat set with a decent amount of stam, int, agi, and spell power, and then another set with stam, int, and avoidance stats. As of the writing of this script, we have one or two pieces of the latter and none of the former. And finally, we need a purpose-built weapon. Trying to figure out what current type of weapon is best for threat literally led me to build an entire TPS calculator and even then list changes based on what gear you're currently wearing. What we need is a slow weapon with decent damage, not just the normal caster weapon damage, a good chunk of spell power on it, and don't forget the stamina. 
This weapon that I designed right after I made the calculator was intended to beat every weapon in the game aside from Thunder Fury, using stats that are worse than Nefarian loot. As you can see, its spell power is less than that of Lakamir, and I literally just ripped the speed and damage from Claw the Black Drake. Just doing that puts it far ahead of both Gressel and MSA on TPS, meaning that should this weapon be added to the game, it should drop from a T3 level rate. All in all, Protection Paladins still need more work, both to get up to par with the other tanks and to actually play in raids. Due to the current issues with the spec, consumes are almost mandatory, mainly to make up for not enough stam. But with the right amount of effort put in, Prop Paladin is a good addition to a raid, and I'd even go so far as to recommend that every raid has at least one Prop Paladin. If you made it this far into the video, please consider subscribing, and thanks so much for watching. Oh, and I ended up cutting a lot of details into some topics to avoid this video being too long, so if there's a topic you want me to delve deeper into, feel free to tell me in the comments down below. Taunted the wrong one. <laughs> I know. <laughs> How do you keep track of that? <laughs> <laughs> Can't make one mistake over. Yeah.